all right so a few things have been happening in open source there is some sort of a controversy that that was sort of inevitable if i'm being honest so in this video i'm going to talk about um, a few do's and don'ts if you're thinking of contributing to open source what are the controversies that are happening how much i think i have a part to play in it and what are the measures that i have taken to prevent it and the things that you should do if you're thinking of contributing to open source from india pakistan generally southeast asia i think there are a few things that we are doing wrong which we can improve upon so let's talk about that in this video let me set some context first uh, there are a few videos that a few youtubers made which was they were related to you know a lot of indians contributing to open source not the right way what's not the right way harkirat um, making a lot of typo changes documentation changes filling up 40 50 pull requests in one day tagging a lot of maintainers creating a lot of issues in their heads making the lives generally of maintainers very miserable i have personally been a maintainer and sort of seen this first hand so i understand the problem the reason this problem sort of happened was because there's a wave of two things in india one you can get a t-shirt via hacktoberfest two you might get a job if you contribute to open source this led to a lot of indians sort of flocking to these organizations and making bad contributions so that's what's happening this has been happening for a while now it's only that it's come to light now a little too much thanks to people making videos on it so let's talk about um, if you are still thinking of contributing to open source which if i'm being honest just don't i don't think there's too much upside to contributing to open source the wrong way what is the wrong way i'll talk about uh, but if you're still thinking of doing it um, a few don'ts to keep in mind first uh, number 1 don't make typo slash documentation fixes just leave it to other people you want a job as an engineer you want to be an engineer you don't want to make these changes they don't help you at all other than testing your git github skills which you can do on any other project no one's hiring someone who makes a documentation change if i'm being honest this is an anti signal no good engineer would spend time you know making typo fixes in fact engineers dread that so don't make any such changes these just pollute the number of pull requests and it's really hard for maintainers to look at the real ones number 2 contributing without setting up the project um i think in this chase of contributing really quickly to get ahead of everyone people don't even set up the project they just try to fix it some way you know make some code change which is again good as a beginner to test things out but not at all a good contribution you want to make you don't even know the fix that you've made has actually worked and hence if that is the case it did not fix it which most probably it will be if you've not set up the project locally it will just you know lead to a lot of back and forth the maintainer would have just fixed that issue themselves if you know they had to do it in such a half hearted way so don't make half hearted contributions if you feel like you can't even set up the project locally there's no point of trying to fix an issue you're not fixing anything you're just you know scrambling to get up there which i know sounds really fancy as a thing to do i have personally been a victim of this my first year google summer of code i've made ugly contributions and even after making ugly contributions on 26th of march i was sitting like this kid will i get in <laughs> after making these ugly contributions of course i did not but i get the whole you know hope of getting in if you make some contributions push something in there but realistically it does not happen so don't contribute if you can't even set up a project locally creating issues in your own head I've seen seeing this very commonly a good example of this is there's a place in backpack where it said gm space your name and someone made a contribution of changing this to good morning good evening and good night based on you know the current time zone and what's the time there gm is a web3 lingo it was put there for a reason as you know a hack slash a fun thing and someone tried to convert it into you know good morning and good evening thinking this is a good logical thing to do it is a good logical thing to do but not something that the company wants so don't create issues in your head if 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 you do them don't create a pull request for it don't start fixing it up if you know you don't even know if it's an issue preferably just stay away from the issues and the pull request section unless you are invited unless you ask for it unless you're dying for it because you are asking for it you're dying for it unless you're actually uh, assigned an issue just don't start solving it um getting a t-shirt this one i have personally never promoted thankfully i'm not to blame for this one i did not even know what october fest was for the longest time only comes to tell you even big companies like digital ocean could not fathom okay you know this would become a problem and giving out t-shirts for free contributions could make the lives of open source maintainers so hard so just leave fact october fest guys there's there's no point doing it it just puts india in a bad light it's not worth it for a t-shirt if you want a t-shirt just mail me i'll i'll send you a t-shirt tagging maintainers don't do this i've personally been a victim of this people just aggressively tag maintainers as to why their pr has not been merged 
the maintainer can look at your pull request. They're most probably busy, which is why they're not looking at it. Don't persistently tag them. If possible, don't tag them at all. When they get the time, they'll get to it. There's no upside you're getting by merging it in. You're just pissing off the maintainer a little bit more. That's not bringing you in a good light in the eyes of the maintainer. A few do's. If you really want to pull some value out of open source, pull value in your learning. I'm not saying you can't get jobs by open source. You can. You can also get into GSOC by open source and other open source programs. Um, but these are like one-time outcomes. This might be coming out of too much privilege here. GSOC is a big thing. Outreach is a big thing. Getting a job by open source is a big thing. Um, don't keep that as the goal though. Keep these two things as the goal. Everything else will be an outcome. What are the two things? Forking and shadowing an open source project. Just fork it and shadow issues. If you look at an issue and a maintainer is solving it, try to solve it yourself. Don't create a pull request and then shadow. See if the maintainer made a similar change. Are you able to understand code as well as the main maintainer? This is the difficult bit. This is something like no one wants to do. Actually understand the project end to end and try to make contributions at a production worthy uh, company slash a production worthy level. You're being given the opportunity to look at how things are being done in production in a real company. And like you're just throwing that away by you know contributing so much and pissing off the maintainers and then the maintainers are just taking projects open source. So if at all you want to learn, um, just spend some time forking and shadowing and checkpointing your knowledge. Are you able to actually understand the code base completely? If not, what is the point of even trying to contribute? If you can't even understand what's happening, if you're, there's such a big knowledge gap that you're, you can't even scramble through the code base, what do you think happens once you join a company? You understand the complete code base, right? You want to join a company. The value to take out of open source is, can you understand code base as, at that level? And if you can, you will at some point get a job, if not in this company, a different one. Cool. Those were the do's and don'ts. Please keep them in mind. I don't want to keep talking about this again and again. There is a reason that the last you know, open source contribution video on my channel was six months ago. I pretty much left it after the Tanmay Bhatt video. The reason for this was even Wormhole, the project that they contributed to, sort of got spammed. And then I realized there's no real point of doing this on YouTube. Um, I have tried to take measures on my side. At the same time, happy to be blamed for all of this from India. I've always kept a lot of disclaimers in my videos doing the same here please don't put me in a bad light i personally talk to maintainers and you know people aren't happy so let, let's not um, make people unhappier let's try to fix this as much as possible and how can you do it please try to follow these points all right a few points i want to talk about let's go from the bottom here um, that there are sort of bad things that I, i'm being tagged on happy to take the blame for it as i said uh, but polluting open source i think i am to blame for it but then even though digital ocean is to blame for it no one could have predicted that you know, trying to do something good could lead to so much bad. Um, it's been six months since I've made that last video. Every video of mine has had huge disclaimers, like two minute disclaimers, okay, guys, please don't do it the wrong way, do it the right way. Um, the maintainers of these projects don't like it. I've personally been a maintainer in one of these projects and it's pretty painful to look at 30 pull requests and get tagged persistently on issues where people have left obvious things and not fixed them. So just don't make these contributions. And lastly, there's a stark difference in the day zero versus day one attitude of maintainers. When I put out a video uh, and I talk to the maintainers, on day zero, everyone's really happy because the project has suddenly reached GitHub trending. They're seeing so many people come in the community and talk. So day zero, every contributor is happy. Day one, when 30 pull requests get put out in the same day is when People tend to realize this is a little unmanageable and then if it keeps on happening for a month is when people don't like the fact that the project was, you know, put out on YouTube. So even the maintainers of these projects couldn't have predicted, you know, this could go down that path. And I think this is something that you only learn after 15 days of, you know, a lot of Indian people or, you know, they see people contributing to that project persistently. Um, so no one could have predicted this. I'm personally happy to take all the blame for it. But hopefully after this video, and this doesn't happen too often, and even if it does, uh, I'm not to blame for it. Um, 5CR offer, people keep saying you talk a lot about compensation. I'm happy not to. Um, I don't know what to do here. I don't know. I'm happy to put out wrong numbers. If if I'm being honest, it's like as honest as I could in terms of an offer. Uh, 4CR was still a little inflated when it comes to stock and equity, but I've tried to be completely honest here. The only goal is to show you a ceiling on maybe a good value that you can reach from India. It does not mean K50 lakh is bad or even 5 lakh is bad. You can pick and choose. The goal is to show you can reach here. I've sort of always tried to be transparent about these things. Happy not to be if you feel this is not good. Um, paid courses, yeah, I think if a $50 course which teaches you for six months live on the weekends uh, could totally be seen in the bad light as well. I'm happy to take the blame 
for this as well, the only good thing I can tell you is the, the, the thing that it brings is accountability for both sides. Um, when you charge someone, you have to come on live on the weekend for two hours and teach um, and make sure everyone is having a good experience versus on YouTube, you can pretty much, you know, be a little chill. That's what's been happening with the Web3 roadmap. If you look at my whole Web3 series, I'm, I know Web3 very well. I, I can teach it in a few hours, but there's only been like three videos in three months. Why? Because there isn't no accountability on my side. The same is true on the other side. If you don't pay for something, you have lesser accountability. There are a thousand experiments that have been done on it. So I'm not going to come here and prove, still trying to provide as much value as I can. And I'm hoping it's, um, you know, a bang for the buck. And lastly, clickbaits, my videos tend to be a little clickbait. I unfortunately am not involved in any of this. Titles and thumbnails are handled by a consult. Shout out to Aryan and Divya. They've been handling it from the beginning. So I don't really want to budge in. Um, they've had a good contribution in the channel's growth. So whatever they do is fine. Unless it's really bad and something I don't agree with, I don't get myself involved in the titles and the thumbnails. If you feel something is incorrect in the content of the video, tag me, let me know. But if the titles and the thumbnails are a little clickbaity, unfortunately, that's how YouTube works. All right. Let's try to get away from zero sum mindset. Let's try to get away from desperation to get um, a job as soon as possible and to try to develop things the right way. I don't know if this video is enough to do it, um, but hopefully a step in the right direction. With that, someone in the team made a small montage um, about my whole journey in the last one year and how it sort of led to a few things being done in open source. Um, that was what was the motivation for this video. So hopefully you like that montage and let's get back into coding from the next one from a new country. I'll see you guys in Paris. Bye bye. <sighs>